December 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Proverbs chapter 10 from the Old Testament. The Proverbs of Solomon A wise child makes a father rejoice, but a foolish child is a grief to his mother. Treasures gained by wickedness do not profit, but righteousness delivers from mortal danger. The Lord satisfies the appetite of the righteous, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. The one who is lazy becomes poor, but the one who works diligently becomes wealthy. The one who gathers crops in the summer is a wise son, but the one who sleeps during the harvest is a son who brings shame to himself. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but the speech of the wicked conceals violence. The memory of the righteous is a blessing, but the reputation of the wicked will rot. The wise person accepts instructions, but the one who speaks foolishness will come to ruin. The one who conducts himself in integrity will live securely, but the one who behaves perversely will be found out. The one who winks his eye causes trouble, and the one who speaks foolishness will come to ruin. The teaching of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the speech of the wicked conceals violence. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers all transgressions. Wisdom is found in the words of the discerning person, but the one who lacks wisdom will be disciplined. Those who are wise store up knowledge, but foolish speech leads to imminent destruction. The wealth of a rich person is like a fortified city, but the poor are brought to ruin by their poverty. The reward which the righteous receive is life. The recompense which the wicked receive is judgment. The one who heeds instruction is on the way to life, but the one who rejects rebuke goes astray. The one who conceals hatred utters lies, and the one who spreads slander is certainly a fool. When the words abound, transgression is inevitable, but the one who restrains his words is wise. What the righteous say is like the best silver, but what the wicked think is of little value. The teaching of the righteous feeds many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. The blessing from the Lord makes a person rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Carrying out a wicked scheme is enjoyable to a fool, and so is wisdom for the one who has discernment. What the wicked fears will come on him, what the righteous desire will be granted. When the storm passes through, the wicked are swept away, but the righteous are an everlasting foundation. Like vinegar to the teeth and like smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those who send him. Fearing the Lord prolongs life, but the lifespan of the wicked will be shortened. The hope of the righteous is joy, but the expectation of the wicked will remain unfulfilled. The way of the Lord is like a stronghold for the upright, but it is destruction to evildoers. The righteous will never be moved, but the wicked will not inhabit the land. The speech of the righteous bears the fruit of wisdom, but the one who speaks perversion will be destroyed. The lips of the righteous know what is pleasing, but the speech of the wicked is perverse. God, the Proverbs are filled with so much wisdom. And in this particular section of Proverbs, it actually talks directly about wisdom and how it is worth more than anything of the world that we could seek any of the riches that are out there. That wisdom is thought to be more valuable than any of those. And for those who want to hear, this particular section of Proverbs has a plethora of information in it. One of the things that I struggle with with Proverbs 10, not the proverb itself, but the fact that there's so many prosperity preachers out there who use Proverbs 10 to justify the way they live. And you can't pick and choose what works for you in Proverbs 10 as far as acquiring wealth without looking at the totality of your message, God. Picking and choosing verses, I think, is one of my biggest pet peeves. People picking and choosing things in the Bible to support a hypothesis. 
and make it sound like a fact when if you look at the big picture of everything that you've given us in totality that's not what's really going on so a lot of these verses talk about wealth in a very good light uh, especially if you provide money to us uh, it is to be a blessing but they forget verse 16 that says the reward which the righteous receive is life but the recompense which the wicked receive is judgment meaning wealth can come into our life and sometimes even you can send that wealth into our life the people who are righteous are going to do what you want them to with that money since all of it's yours anyways I know that my best possible option when money comes into my life is listen to you and how you want me to spend it and on what or whom you want me to spend that money including of course my tithing that comes at 10% off the top the wicked receive judgment because they receive money even if it's money from you and they choose to use it all about themselves uh, and that all about themselves then leads to sin that worship of idols of money that worship of uh, perhaps brand names cars houses um, brand name clothing perhaps they use that money for activities they shouldn't be involved in uh, drugs and sex and alcohol to to levels that are inappropriate if people don't use money the way that you've asked them to then it can definitely become a sin and I, I speak this firsthand because you know you and I have been dealing with how I used to spend my money um, I'm still dealing with repercussions from that I'm still dealing with the discipline from that situation and so sections like this speak volumes to me and how I'm supposed to live my life that for such a long time I chose not to I am truly thankful that you always through your word show us the way show us the path show us the best opportunities that we have for what you've given us and in this case it happens to be uh, wisdom and wealth and how to use wisdom with wealth um, how to not be lazy and a sluggard and go through life in in poverty intentional poverty and in relationship to what i said at the beginning about the prosperity preachers and definitely another one of my pet peeves uh, you know the end of proverbs 10 talks about that the lips of the righteous know what is pleasing to you O god but the speech of the wicked is perverse I listen to them justify how they choose to spend their money and it's not chosen to help the poor and the needy it's not chosen be a benefit to what you originally gave them the money for instead it's spent on lavish parties helicopters so that they can travel faster to their other churches incredibly gigantic homes I it's even hard to think of God but those last couple of verses of Proverbs 10 as well as the verse 16 uh, are things I keep very close to my heart that it's not my money to spend it is the money that you have given me to use to your glory uh, to help your kingdom and I need to be careful about what that looks like and double check my purchases double check my reasons for spending the money I do uh, you have always taken care of me I've never wanted for anything even when my bank account showed negative amounts somehow you always made sure that I had what I needed to move on to be able to eat to have a roof over my head you have always taken care of me thank you God for these incredible blessings and these wise teachings about money we pray all this in your son's name. Amen.